everybody. I'm a few seconds late, apparently, looks like. Um, but let me know if you can uh, see me. You can see me and hear me. We should be good to go. Looks like my camera is a little off. Where can I? What makes it better? Let's see. Is that better? That's pretty good. All right, I'm going to leave it like that. Still haven't fi quite figured out where I want the camera. I've uh, been playing with the idea of putting it up on a gorilla pod thing, but uh, I don't know. We're not quite there yet. All right, so anyway. Hi. Hey, everybody. It is Friday, February 3rd. Can't believe it's already February. Um, can't believe it's actually only February. Things are... Uh, yeah, things are fun here in the U.S. Uh, anyway, not talking about politics. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is, wherever you are. And uh, the countdown humanoid was going up because I hadn't turned it off yet. Because that's the thing I did. Let me make sure my mic is up nice and loud. Desktop audio is not too loud. All right, things look like they are in pretty good shape. All right, cool. So chat says people can hear me, people can see me. Roger Dean can see me. Humanoids got me going on. Pause has got me going on over on Beam. Marines there. Hey everybody, how are you all doing? All right, so um. First of all, before we get into this, how many of you, if any of you, have been doing the 15-minute challenge, the, the treehouse thing that we've been doing for uh, for a couple of days now? I think we're on day four, day five. Anybody doing the 15-minute uh, the challenge? If you're not, the idea behind it is... Um, to uh, the idea behind it is to spend 15 minutes or so a day uh, learning something. So I've been doing um, Java which is just such such a big difference between uh such a big difference between between uh Java and Python like just so weird um like just constructors and and final and public just it's so weird but it's cool it's an okay language it's neat um so yeah anybody else doing the 15 minute challenge let me know and uh, let me know what you're what you've been learning if you're doing it cuz i think it's a cool idea uh pause has been doing it all right that's cool uh the some people you're you're not being ignored it's just not a question i care to answer i can see it i just don't have a reason to answer it uh anyway <laughs> let's talk about what we've been doing our uh our project is is pretty well underway um the thing that we started last uh, last week was um, doing this uh, invite users. I don't know why I moved it over there. Um, you know what? Let's add a new column. And let's just say underway. All right. This is the stuff that we're doing. Um, so we're, we're, we've been working on these two things, right? So... Uh, Users can get invited to a family or to a company, and then uh, also once they're in there, they need to be able to leave that family or company. Um, and so we uh, we started that. We made this thing where we could email a user, or not email, sorry, where we could put in a, an email address or a username, and it would invite that person. Um, if I remember correctly, we had... Uh, did we not put that into the admin? I guess we didn't. Let's go stick that into the admin real quick so I can show you what this looks like. Um, groups models. Yep, that's where that is. Uh, okay. So then admin.site.register models.company invite and family invite. There we go. Refresh this. There we go. And then we had a company invite from Kenneth Love to test user to join that company object. Cool. Uh, Vivek Canandan. Uh, sorry if I 
butchered that, uh, asks me to repeat about the 15-minute challenge. So the idea is that you, um, you spend... You spend 15 minutes a day learning something. Uh, whatever the thing is that you want to learn... Uh, anyway, uh, you spend 15 minutes learning whatever the thing is that you want to learn. So you're like, oh, I want to learn uh, more math, or I want to learn uh, JavaScript, or I want to learn, I don't know, pottery, whatever. Uh, you spend 15 minutes a day learning about that thing. Uh, so you, you watch a video, you read a book, you, uh, you go throw a pot, um, and then... Uh, you post about it on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, like whatever. I don't, I don't think we care where you post about it. Uh, and then you use this 15 min challenge hashtag. And um, that way we kind of keep track of who's, who's doing this. And uh, I do believe there's some sort of prize or prizes that are being given out. But I don't know for certain. Um, let's see about this blog post. Here we go. Um... Challenge, guidelines, um, yeah, so each week there, there's a new giveaway, so, um, yeah, so I don't even know what the prizes are, I don't remember seeing that list, but there's some sort of list of prizes, uh, but yeah, so check that out if you're, uh, if you're interested in, in dedicating a little bit of time each day to learning something, uh, it can really go a long way in helping you learn things. So, like, like I said, for instance, I've been learning uh, Java. I've been working through uh, some of our basic uh, Java courses. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been really cool. I've been picking up quite a bit of stuff from this just by the fact that... Um, just by the fact that I'm having to go through these courses. Um, and, yeah, it's pretty impressive just how much stuff there is in each of these languages that really kind of um, like doesn't really change all that much from one to the next. Like the stuff that I'm doing in Java feels and looks a whole lot like the stuff I do in Python, right? So yeah. Um, you know what I need to do? I need to put on quiet hours. There we go. Because uh, <laughs> there's no reason to have that. All right, cool. So what I just did a second ago was I went and added to our group model, which is our abstract group model. I had it set up a uh, string method for uh, to return the name because I was tired of seeing company object. Uh, and let's go fix that on these company invites too. And let's add a thing here. Um, yeah. Um, let's say self dot to user invited by self dot from user test user invited by cannot club there we go um and actually let's override that
name f is not defined. Well, I know f isn't defined. Eh. All right, let's just do this. Um. Sorry. Ooh, I just realized I got a lot of chat here. Um. How can you learn C Sharp Windows form application from Treehouse? So I don't know a lot about the C Sharp world. Um. I think Windows Form is like an actual thing, right? Like that's a a, a, a part of the C Sharp dot net world. Not to say dot net. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you can see my ignorance there. Um, sorry. So yeah, um, I uh, I don't actually know of a good way to do that. Uh, I don't actually know of a good way to uh, tell you to um, to learn Windows form applications from Treehouse. Uh, I know we have a lot of C Sharp stuff uh, underway and in the works, so keep an eye on the library, and you'll see more um, you'll see more and more stuff. Um, but that said. Uh, I don't know if we have that yet, and I don't know when that will come into being, if we, um, if and, and when we get that. So I can't say for certain uh, how you'd learn that from us, but um, I'm sure it'll come up. Uh, if you email um, James, who does most of our C Sharp uh, courses now, uh, and let him know that you're interested in learning that, then uh, I'm sure he will, you know, try and get it onto his schedule and stuff. Uh, Muhammad, great to uh, great to know that y'all like me in the Middle East. Um, I'm big fans of everyone there as well. <laughs> uh, I, I like everybody. So anyway, um, and yeah, Google and Roger Dean, it is Python. It's very annoying, uh, Steam, that you're not paying attention to my quiet time settings. All right. So while we've been talking, I've been updating uh, the string methods here just to make it so that we see like test user invited to treehouse by Kenneth Love, right? That way we can see those things. So the program that I'm using right now, this is called PyCharm. PyCharm is a, an IDE created by JetBrains, uh, and this is Google Chrome. Uh, and we are building a... It's a website for tracking your feelings, seeing seeing how you feel. Um, so yeah, let's add a view that will show you all of your invites. So, um, kind of feels like this should just be one generic view, right? Or, yeah, we can just put it in here. We can just have a section in here that says invites. That works. All right, so let's make it for company first. So, class invites. Yeah, that works. Uh, login required mix in generic dot list view. Right, yeah. Model equal, we don't need model. We want to do def get query set return self dot request dot user dot company invite underscore received. That should be it. Um, we'll want to filter these later to where um, it's only the ones that haven't been accepted yet. But let's let's do that in a minute. Um, template name is equal to groups slash companies. So that's how we did that, right? Yep. Slash invites dot html. Now, I have a feeling our company invites and our family invites are going to end up looking very, very similar. 
Um, our, our templates here are already very, very similar already. We could probably make these more generic, make these more reusable, but I'm not too worried about it because A, I know we're going to build other interfaces on top of this, and B, eh, this optimization isn't really that important, right? Like, it's a, good, uh, it's a good optimization to have, but it's not an optimization that's like, oh, if I don't get this done, I won't be able to do anything, right? So, um, I'm just not going to worry about optimizing that at the moment. Uh, all right, let's add our new template here. And... Let's just copy and paste a bunch of this stuff in. Um, let's call that invites. And then... All right, so then here in this first column, let's do a thing. Let's just start by listing all of the invites. For invite and invites, that's going to have to go somewhere, but let's not worry about it right now. Um, Invite.company by invite.fromuser. You know, it's too bad, like, PyCharm is obviously pretty smart. It's too bad they can't figure out if I insert a tag right here, there's a really good chance I want to end it right there. Like, that's fine, whatever. Uh, so, we said this would be at groups, companies, invites. Oh, that's not groups, company, invites, that would just be companies invites all right restart that there we go okay so first of all I want to go look at these URLs because I think yeah so we have this one Let's add in view. Yeah, that'll make the URL look a little nicer. Um, don't use TDD. I don't usually, no, Paolo. Um, I don't have any problems with TDD. TDD is fine. I find that for a live stream, TDD really slows things down. Um, but no, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't usually use TDD. Um, I don't know. Maybe I should. Uh, let's. You know what? One thing I do want to add. Let's commit this real quick, and then let's add a thing to make stuff a little nicer for us. Um, starting invite view. And I will go ahead and push that. All right. Uh, one thing that we need to that it would be nice to have is a Django debug toolbar because that way we can see um, we can see what's going on as far as like our query sets and stuff go. Um, so let's see about getting that installed and set up. So installation. We're in here. We want to add debug toolbar. There it is. Install that. Now, I don't know what these other ones are. Um, there's probably some here that would actually be really handy to play with. I just need to go look through them at some point. Um, force debugging has extra functionality. Yeah, we should go look through some of these. Um, anyway, though. That's debug toolbar installed. So that is debug toolbar 1.6. I want to go and add that to my uh, requirements. Uh, 
Uh, and that way you all can install that as well. And then what is our next thing that we have to do? We got to put it into installed apps. So we'll put it up here, debug toolbar. And we've got to add it into the URLs. Which it actually needs to be that one. Um, mm -hmm. If settings dot debug import debug toolbar not toll bar toolbar there we go uh, URL patterns plus equals URL ah, they do a carrot debug include debug toolbar dot URLs uh, and then middleware okay so back over here to settings and then there's our middleware and let's put it into there we say debug toolbar dot middleware.debug toolbar middleware all right so we want this early um, but we want it after anything that uh, encodes the response content so I'm thinking we probably just want it after common that's probably a good place for it. All right, now let's uh, let's check on this thing. Let's restart it just to be sure we're good. Yep. All right. Let's refresh this page. And we didn't get our debug stuff. Debug is true. Oh, thanks, Paws. I will. Uh, I will check that out later. Um, okay, so it's installed but it's not showing up. Because um, I forgot the internal IPs. OK, cool. Uh, internal IPs is not a setting that is here by default, right? Yep. So I'm going to add it up here after allowed hosts, because that makes sense. Uh, and so let's add in 127.0.0.1. And then now let's try this again. Hey, there's my panel. Cool. All right. So for those of you who haven't ever played with Debug Toolbar, thanks, Maureen. Um, what's cool about Debug Toolbar is it gives you this little toolbar on the side. Like, you know, big surprise there. It's called Debug Toolbar, and it gives you a toolbar. Uh, and believe it or not, this toolbar lets you debug things. Uh, but uh, what's really handy is this tab right here. I love this one. This is called SQL. And this shows me all of my SQL queries, right? So I'm doing all these SQL queries. So that's cool. I can see here that I'm getting the company. I'm getting this. I'm getting. But do you notice that we don't have... Um, we don't have one that's doing this, right? Um, or at least we don't. We don't seem to. I don't. I don't see that in there anywhere. So we need to make sure that we are getting all of these. So 
I have a feeling that I just screwed up my query. Before I get to that though, let's do added debug toolbar and commit and push that. Oh, by the way, I saw somebody posted on YouTube that they were having a hard time getting something to work like mine was working. They weren't getting um, a, a date time or something to show up. All the code's on GitHub. It's at uh, github.com slash treehouse slash, what is it, livestream Django feelings. Um, so you can go check that out, and uh, you will always have access to all of the code. So feel free to do that. I, I highly recommend it. And that way you'll be able to see everything that's going on. Um, so company invite should be the class that should be received. Maybe it would be company underscore invite. I don't think it would be, but maybe. Right. Right. Oh, ha ha. I'm being silly. I am looking here as Kenneth Love. I'm not looking here as um, the other user. So let's log in as test user. Uh, test user, test password. Cool, test user has never recorded any recent thoughts. Um, they've never been to any of these things. Um, They've been invited to Treehouse, so let's try company's invites. No invites. All right, let's make sure this URL is actually getting hit. So we've got create, we've got invites, and then we've got edit, and we've got view. That comes after companies. Yeah, we're hitting this one. Because if I look at, like, request, there's my view function. That should be showing up. Right? Because here's our... That's our company. goes to invites, right? But our invite here that goes to the to user, the rated name is class received, which that class gets this company invite name. Okay. Yeah. Maybe there's just something weird with my UR with my UL. Uh, inspect. There's just nothing in the UL. Okay, cool. So maybe that's my problem. Maybe my template is wrong. For invite in. Oh yeah. That should be object list. That's not the right one to refresh. There we go. Ha. Huh. All right. Cool. So <laughs> now that I'm not being dumb. Uh, all right. So there is our invite. We need to have a way to accept that invite or reject that invite, right? So I need to be able to throw this one away, which reminds me I should probably have a rejected boolean on here as well. Let's go change that. So rejected equals models dot boolean field. Or, you know what's easier? Let's do this. Let's say invite statuses. And we'll say zero is uh, pending. We'll say one is accepted, 
and we'll say two is rejected. Can y'all think of any other statuses that an invite would have, right? An invite is either waiting. We don't know yet if somebody has accepted this thing or not. Um, accepted, somebody has said, yeah, I want to I wanna join that. Or it's rejected, and they've said, no, I don't want this invite. So I think that's probably it. So let's change accepted to status. And this will be an integer field. The default will be zero. And that's good enough. All right, so we got to migrate that. Uh, make migrations for groups. Migrate groups. Cool. Run server. And what's 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 cool is this one should now change to where the status is this, right? Um. So yeah. Now our status is zero. Now I know there's a way I can change this status so it does like a drop down. I don't know if that's worth worrying about or not. But um, let's let's look real quick. I want what are my model admin options? That's what I want to look at. Register decorator. Admin options, empty value display, exclude fields, field sets. I think I would just have to change the form so that it used. Form field override. I wonder if that'll work. Let's try that real quick. Um, to admin. Class invite admin. Admin.model admin. Uh, and then what was that? That was form field overrides. It was this thing models. Integer field. Django.db import models. Models.integer field widget is something else. I want to make that a select. Here we go, widgets. Widget class. That should be a select. OK. So we'd say select there. And then we'd say from Django.forms. dot widgets. So let's just see if this works. Um, and then register goes that and then the model. Uh, models as Django models. Sorry, I see chat is running. I will get back to that in just a second. All right, let's figure that out in a minute. Okay, um, 
Kashik is uh, coming by. I gotta leave because it's nighttime. You watch them later. You want to know uh, if I will do more pie game? Uh, not today. Uh, in the future, sure, we'll do more pie game. I'm I'm sure. Um, so yeah, and then uh, yeah. And then uh, Ritesh asks, how can I write without looking at the keyboard? Um, touch typing. I've been doing that for a long, long time. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, it's just a, a, you know, practice kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, Yusuf says, you don't understand. What do you not understand, Yusuf? And I will happily go over it. Okay, so that didn't do what I wanted. And this may be something that we just drop out in a second because it doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of... It'll make it look nicer, right? Um... Oh, did I not do that? I think I didn't do that. Where's my models? Yeah, I didn't do that. Okay, so let's do this. Choices equals invite statuses. And then now, let's go back over here to our admin. And we don't need any of this. And that means we don't need either of those. And then if we come back over here to our admin and we refresh it, there we go. Now we've got our statuses as something that actually looks, uh, you know, nice. We can see that it's pending. All right, cool. So after that diversion, um, and let's, uh, let's add these in and we'll say status choices. Commit and push, and push again. It's so weird that I have to hit push twice, but whatever. Uh, cool, Kashuk. We'll see you next time. Um, have a good, uh, have a good night. All right. So here I have my. Um, this is our our invite, right? So a, let's make the invites look a little nicer. A, I'll do this up here where you can see me on camera. And B. Uh, let's add in the buttons for accept and reject. And, um, yeah. And then Zed asks, can you explain the class meta? I sure can. So, in a Django model, you have uh, this thing here called class meta. Now, you'll see these in um, model forms as well. But models is where they are almost, like... They're in almost every model. You'll you'll rarely see a model that doesn't have them, except for places like this where you're inheriting from one that has a model meta. So the meta here lets you define uh, characteristics of that model. So um, these are things that that kind of explain like the building of the model class, um, and so that way. I can specify that, hey, this model is abstract, or this model should always be ordered by this field, or whatever, right? So um, that way you've got a really handy thing for, like, you don't have to set the ordering every time you select from that model or, or other attributes. So it's just a way of defining particular attributes for a model at any given time. Uh, and Ritesh says, why web pages aren't using XML right now? Uh, well, XML is not the best language for, H for, for web pages. XML is kind of a horrible language if somebody has to write it by hand. Uh, XML is fine if it's just computers doing it. XML is um, not even kind of horrible. XML is really horrible if it's uh, humans doing it. So that's why it's uh, that's why it's like that. All right. So if I remember correctly, we had 
a page that had, yeah, I think it was this list group thing that we wanted, right? Like, where was that? List group. Yeah. So we want something like this that shows each of the invites. So let's, um, let's come over here to our invites.html. And on this, let's say this is class is list group. And then this li is class equals list group item. All right. And then I actually don't want the HTML tag in, in there anymore. The, uh, the anchor tag because we're not going to link to anything. It's just going to say this, right? So um, we're going to have that, and then we're going to have two buttons out here, one that says accept, one that says reject. Um, so that way we can have our two buttons. So let's go ahead and add those real quick. Um, we'll do these as ahrefs, and we'll say accept. And we'll say reject. And we'll give each of these a class of button. And this one will be button danger. And this one will be button success. There we go. So something like that. Um, let's do a div class equals pull right. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So, um, sorry, we got some chat here. Let's see. Uh, Kaushik says in Android we use it for front end code. For uh, yeah, you'll use XML in Android um, because Android is based on Java, and Java has a long, long storied history of loving and using XML for all sorts of things. Um, that's fine. That's uh, that's Android's choice. Uh, it's not Python's choice, and it's not the general internet's choice. Uh, Android's front end is not the internet's front end. Android is an app running on a device, running on a phone or a tablet or a whatever. Um, that's not the internet, right? So those aren't the same for each other. Uh, Yusuf says, if I want to start to learn code, can I start with Java? Sure. Java is a fine language. Um, it's more verbose than others, but it's less verbose than, say, Objective-C. Um, but Java's got some cool stuff. Kotlin is really neat, and Scala is really neat, too, actually. Um, so, yeah, check it out if you, if you want to try it. And some user interface programming languages. Um like tickle or or uh something like that or or do you mean something more like uh like kaushik says there react or um I, my mind's blank today uh anyway stuff like stuff like that um yeah okay so let's make these things work so right now these need to uh go somewhere and they need to accept or reject the thing that they go to. So I actually want to do one other thing first. Um, let's get over here to the glyphicons and I want to find these two. There we go. So instead of accept, let's do I class equals Glyphicon, Glyphicon dash. Okay. And if we save that and we refresh this page, now we get a check mark. And then here, I class equals Glyphicon, Glyphicon dash. What did that say? Remove.
There we go. So that way we've got, okay, I'm going to accept this thing or I'm going to reject this thing. I mean, React and Angular are user interface programming things, but they're not really languages, right? They're libraries built on top of JavaScript. So you're still writing JavaScript the whole time you're writing React or Angular or Vue.js or any of those things, right? Um, so you're not you're not really doing um, you're not really using a unique programming language. A unique programming language that's just for interfaces would be something like um, T uh, TCL, Tickle, right? Or TK. Um, GTK is a programming language for interfaces. Um, you know, stuff like that where it's you're building like a uh, a desktop app. Uh, I mean, C Sharp is a user interface programming language or it's a programming language that's used to build interfaces that has libraries that do interfaces. Anyway, let's get back to this. Let's not let's not worry about Google uh, about interfaces. Uh, okay, so I've got this one, and I want to be able to click this button and accept that that uh, that invite. So let's make a new view over here, and. I almost want to post to this. I almost want to do this as a post request so that let's not worry about that for now. Uh, okay, so um, invite response login required mix in. And this is just going to be a generic dot redirect view. All we're going to do here is they're going to come to this and we're going to, oh yeah, JavaFX, that's a good one. Uh, although again, library, not exactly language. Anyway, um, they're going to hit this page and we're going to redirect them to somewhere else, right? So we're going to send them back to like, um, probably back to the invite list page. Okay, so. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to do def git self args quargs and that should take request as well. And um, we want to, when they get here, we want to take the invite that they've accepted or rejected and we want to send that through into um, into the database, and then we want to redirect them back to somewhere else, right? So let's do this. Uh, we'll say success URL equals reverse lazy. I don't think this is actually called success URL. I think this has a different name. Uh, Java and PHP to start as backend dev languages. So I built a website. Am I going the right direction? Sure. Um, PHP and Java are both fine languages. You don't necessarily need both of them. Uh, either one of them will work. Um, but yeah, they're both they're both fine languages. Uh, it's not success URL. It's just URL. That's it. There we go. Reverse lazy. And this is groups, companies, invites. And Jatasia asks, can we do a sending mail option when invite, like a notification? Yes, we're going to get to that. Uh, but first, let's make sure that we can accept and reject these things and leave them if we want to. Um, then we'll worry about the notifications because I want to add in some messaging and stuff like that too. So um, we will get there. Don't you worry. Uh, so that's where to redirect them to. All right. So then what we want to do here is we want to do invite equals request.user.company invite received dot get. Let's actually try. 
accept models dot company invite dot does not exist get or oh man y'all get to see whenever I forget stuff uh, okay what is this Django this is get object or 404 right that's the name of the thing get object or 404 yeah that's it okay so we need to import that so that is from Django dot shortcuts import get object or 404 all right so here let's do get object or 404 and our model is models dot company invite and our stuff is to user equals request dot user and our UUID is equal to quarks dot get code because we're gonna have that in the URL and let's say status has to equal zero And that's it. That's all we care about on that, right? So there's our invite. So now we want to do invite.status equals one. No, not equals one. Uh, equals quargs.get response. Uh, yeah, response. No. Uh, if quargs.get response is equal to one, then the status is going to equal one. And this isn't going to be one, this is going to be except else invite.status equals two. So they rejected it. Return super.get request args quarks. All right. So, uh, yeah, okay, that should handle all of that. All right, uh, let me get back over here. Maskud asks, do, does Treehouse do PHP live coding too? Not yet, so far I'm the only teacher that's doing the live coding, but I've talked to all of them, they're all interested in doing it. It's just a matter of timing and things like that. Some of them have stuff they do on Fridays or they don't have a free day open yet um, to where they could actually come on and do stuff. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, takes time. Uh, and then Ritesk asked how to do a pop-up window in a web page and got immediately answered with JavaScript alert or uh, alert with that. Yeah, you can do alert or you can do uh, confirm right yeah confirm is the other one confirms the one that does the uh the thing where you're like i want to do the thing uh yes or no kind of thing that's it all right okay so we're going to add in our response thing here uh and so our response is going to be a uh code which will be that, right? Let's look at our admin here. Um, we don't even need the hyphen. It's just, yeah. It's just that. And then we're going to have response, which is going to be either accept or reject. And then close that in a dollar sign. And I need a P right there. Okay. 
invite response. And let's say this is invite response. 120 characters. Oh my goodness. I know you were watching for that marine. Um, okay. So cool. That should be that. So now let's come back over here to invites. And we should be able to change this to be URL groups companies invite response code should be equal to invite.uuid and response should be equal to accept. All right, let's save that. Oh, that should be two stars. Okay. Refresh. And if we check out this URL, let's pull this up over here. We've got groups, companies, invites, and then we've got a code, and then we've got accept. So, cool. There's that. Now let's do the same thing for the reject one. So, uh, why I quote... And except here, we want to say reject. And if we refresh this, there's our reject, there's our accept. Cool. Uh, Niles asks, is web development Python's primary usage? Not prime. Python doesn't really have a primary usage. Python is pretty heavily used by a lot of different companies for a lot of different things. So web development is a very common usage of Python, especially with frameworks like Flask, Django, and Pyramid, but it is not the only usage of Python or even the largest usage of Python. Um, for instance, I'm going to a conference here in a couple of months called PyCon, uh, PyCon US, PyCon North America. Uh, it will have five or six tracks of talks for three days straight, and that will cover Python on the web, Python on Internet of Things, Python in embedded systems, Python uh, for different business purposes, Python for video and audio and games, and yeah, uh, Python for making movies, Python for all sorts of stuff. So uh, that will be, you know, a pretty common thing. So I want to, let's make another one of these. Um, Let's make another one of these here. Uh -huh. um, save and add another. There we go. All right, so we're going to make another one from Kenneth Love to test user. Um, and we need to make another company. There's too many. We don't have enough companies here yet. Um, okay, so we'll call this one uh, live stream. This is our live stream company. Um, and the only member so far is Kenneth Love. Okay. Uh. UID should not There we go. So now it filled it out on its own. Cool. So, um, now, if I come back over here, I should see two. Yay, I have two of them. Cool. So I'm going to accept the treehouse one. And I should come right back to here. Okay. And I can still see all of these because we haven't filtered that out yet, right? Let's go do that real quick. Uh, so if I come here and I want to say filter... Status equals zero. Do I need to restart for that? I wouldn't have think I needed to restart for that one. Oh, ha, y'all know what I did? Or didn't do? 
I didn't do that right there. I didn't save the fact that we changed the invite. <sighs> okay. Let's accept the treehouse one. Cool. And now it's gone, right? So now we just have the live stream one left. And now let's reject the live stream one. Test user does not want to join my live stream company. And that's cool. That's fine. Test user doesn't have to join it. Test user can do whatever test user wants to do. So now if I check out here, um, here's the one I sent to test user for a live stream and they are now, they've rejected it. And if I come back over here to the treehouse one, they've accepted that one. All right. So cool. So we've got companies. You can, you can join a company. Uh, you can leave a company. You can do all sorts of things for companies. Um, okay. So all that did, all that did was that um, the user invited, uh, accepted or rejected the invitation. Let's make it now to where they actually join the company once they get in there. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set both of these back to pending. Uh, and this one too. Okay. So those should both come back in here. Oh, sorry, not there. They should both come back in here. Let's go add that to the menu real quick. And then we'll do a commit um, layout. All right. And then before this create new, let's add in a new one, which is invites. invitations and then let's come down here and change this one too and that one would fail so let's wrap that in this just for now and our page should still work. And if I come here, I have invitations. Okay. So cool. Um, and I don't have that one there. So now I can come to there and I can always see my invitations. All right. So let's do a commit. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Let's do a commit. Uh, except reject is mostly working. Commit and push. Push. All right. So let's talk about the really fun thing known as signals. Uh, any of y'all worked with signals in the past? If you if you played with signals in Django, raise a raise a hand in chat uh, while I go pull up the docs so I can remember how to do them. Because I don't remember how to do them. I don't memorize all this stuff. How about it? Anybody, anybody played with signals before? No? Okay. Um, so what a signal is, is a signal is a way to, um, say, okay, when this thing happens, do this other thing, right? And most of the time these are tied to models. Now they don't have to be tied to models, but most of the time they are. Marines played with them. All right. So Marine, you can tell me when I do something wrong. Um, the cool thing is that signals, hmm, sorry, itchy nose. Signals aren't that hard to mess with. Uh, they're fun to play with. They're a thing that you often want to avoid, but they get a bad rap. A lot of people way overuse signals. They have signals firing for everything all the time. You don't want to do that. Where signals make sense is where you want something to happen and it can happen out of bound or out of band. It's not important if it happens right away, right? It can, it can wait a second until like the processor is ready to work with it. And this is a good place for this because they accept the invite. That's cool. They don't, have to be added to the team right that second, right? It can happen a second or two later. Okay, so let's make a signal that happens to where whenever they accept an invite, we add them to the team, OK? 
okay? So, first thing we need to do is we need to come up here, and that's in core, from django.core.signals import post save. Uh, all right, so Marin, Lars, Muhammad, and and have played with them. Um, so cool. I'm glad. I'm glad we have some people here who have messed with them. And yet, Lars, it is. Oh, sorry, y'all. Oh, okay. Come on, nose. No more itching. Uh, it is often fuzzy the difference between overriding the save method and signals. A big part of it is just: Do you want this thing to happen on the way to the database, or do you want this thing to happen a little bit later? And most of the time, it's okay if it's a little bit later, right? Um, and then we need the receiver. From Django.dispatch import receiver. All right, so let's make an invite, um, an invite accepted thing, right? So receiver receiver who uh, post save sender equals company invite um, because we want this to be tied just to one specific sender we don't want this to be tied to any and all senders right so let's call this uh, join company and it's gonna take sender and then it's going to take quargs, whatever our quargs are. Uh, Muhammad asks, can you create something like desktop notifications when you receive an invitation? We could. Um, that would require us to bring in some JavaScript, and we might do that. We'll, we'll see. Um, but for right now, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, yep, that does that. That does that. Mm-hmm. And then... I want to look at just post save because there's a thing on this one. Uh, so these are my arguments that come in. So I can get the instance and I can get created. Okay. And then I don't really care about uh, raw using or update fields. Those aren't uh, those aren't as important to me, but I do want to have the instance, which is the invitation that was being saved, and I do want to have whether or not created. So we're going to say if not created. So created is set to true the very first time the model instance is saved. I don't want this to happen when the instance is saved because our invite gets created and then somebody accepts it, right? So it's the second save that matters. So... There we go. We're good there. So, if instance.status is equal to 1, so they've accepted the invitation, right? Then I want to do instance.company.members.add instance.toUser. That's it. That's all I want to do, right? Yeah. Let me double check my models. Um, so here's our company. And then to user. That's it, right? So if they join the company, if they accepted the invite, then we want to add them to the company. Okay. Uh, Zed, are signals like callbacks? Um, kind of? Py eh. We have callbacks in Python. We have asynchronous programming in Python. Signals are like a half step toward asynchronous programming as far as Django is concerned. Now, if we want async in Django, we got to go look at a thing called Django Channels, which is really cool. I put out a pro workshop on it a month or so ago. Um, but... They're not exactly callbacks. They're just things that get triggered when something else happens. Uh, it's 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 less of a callback and more of an event listener. Um, but yeah, kinda. All right, so let's uh let's do that. Um, 
cannot import name post save. Oh, because that's from a different place. Uh, I wonder if I come here and I just do that. Cool. It knew what I wanted. All right. There's that. Okay. Now we're over here. Uh, this time, so that we don't get treehouse treehouse, I'm going to accept the live stream invitation. Okay. So I'm going to click the plus sign. And now live stream should be in companies. There it is. Live streams in the company. So that's cool. And then, just to make sure this is still working, I'm going to reject treehouse, and I should only have one treehouse in companies. Cool. So, we're good there. And if I try to go to treehouse2, wasn't that the... Uh... I know we had a slug. Let me pull up the database real quick. That's easier to look at. Yeah, Treehouse 2. Right, so they can't go to Treehouse 2 because they're not in Treehouse 2. Oh, no, wait, that was Companies View Treehouse 2. All right, so they just get a 404 going, I don't, I don't know what that company is. I've never seen that company before. But if I'm up here and I'm the Kenneth Love user who's part of Treehouse 2, then I can see it, right? That URL works. All right, cool. So we've got the invites working. We've got the reject thing working, right? Um, so A, let's commit before I forget. Uh, signal for accepting an invite is working. Commit and push. Push. And then, um, let's add, let's see, what? Let's go look at our, let's go look at our GitHub. Where's our GitHub? Here's our GitHub. Okay, user can invite others to family or company. So we have that. So, uh, I'm gonna let y'all pick the next thing we do. Do y'all want to add in the notifications of the, hey, you've been invited, or do you want to add in the join and leave part? Uh, while y'all are voting, I'm going to go duplicate all this stuff for families and make it work. So y'all vote, decide, figure out what you want to do. And I'm going to duplicate all of this stuff for families instead of just companies. Hey, Quexon, glad to see you here and glad you like Treehouse. Very happy to, uh, to have you around. Yeah, I have to commit before I forget. Uh, so we've got views. I did the views. Um, what is this? Views, family, models, uh, from dot dot import models. That's much easier there. Perform those checks. We good? We're good. All right. So now let's go back over here. 
to this, and then I should be able to take out that and that. And I should be able to refresh, save this page, and nothing should break. Everything works. All right, invitations. That doesn't exist, which is fine. I am going to copy that to families. Yep. And then let's come over here and let's change these URLs to families. Cool, no family invites. Okay, so version control commit families invites stuff. Commit and push, push. All right, so back over here to chat and Quexon is in love with Treehouse. I already read that. Thank you again, though. Uh, Marine has his wonderful commit before you forget thing. Jataja and Nils and Zed all want to do notifications. Muhammad wants to do join leave. And Ryan has... Ryan, Ryan? Ryan? Has a question, which is, how many years is it going to take me to master Java and PHP? What do you mean by master? Um... Yeah, that's really the only question I can ask is what do you mean by master? Because um, if you mean like, oh, I will never ever have any questions or doubts about how to use this thing, um, that's never going to happen. Uh, if you mean I'll be pretty comfortable using this and I can generally figure out what it is I want to do, I don't know, year, two years maybe? Uh, okay. So I'll tell you what, it's actually really easy to do the leave part. So let's do the leave and then we'll wrap up today with the notifications. And I think that will get us, let's look back over here at GitHub. Yeah, I'm not, let's, let's not worry about these aggregates. We'll figure those out later. Um, let's do the, the leave and then let's do the notifications. And I think that will have us wrapped up and ready to start working on the API next week. So we can just, we'll be done with Django Django and we'll start on Django REST framework next week. Does that sound good to everybody? All right, let's do the join leave real quick. And the way that I want to do that is not on the invites page. Let's add a new thing here. Class leave family. Log when required mix in generic dot form view. Uh, because I want people to be certain they want to leave, right? So um so that's that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna make sure that they actually want to leave. So template name equals families slash leave.html. And I also need form class. And this will be forms.leave form. Now, I have a feeling I can make a generic leave form. Um, and then we'll, we'll figure out where we're going to go from there. All right, so let's create our new template here, which is leave.html. Yep, go ahead, add that in. Um, we can just use form.html. We don't even need leave.html. Let's get rid of this. Uh, refactor. Safe delete. Do that refactor. I know I mentioned it. That's fine. Um, form.html. That means we need the set headline mix in. And generic dot form view. Where am I at over here? I'm at 74. All right. Uh, def def get headline return leave self dot object dot just self dot object. There we go. Def get object. 
and we're gonna have the slug in, so we will do self dot object equals get object or 404, which you know what? I didn't import that. I committed breaking code. Oh no, I'm I'm that's not good. Uh, models dot family invite. Not family invite. Um. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, models dot family. We wanna we wanna get that family slug equals self dot quarks dot get slug created by because that was our model name right or our our field mm -hmm. created by not. Self dot request dot user PK in self dot request dot user dot families dot values list ID. That is a really ugly URL. Um, yeah, I don't like that one. Okay, so self dot object equals self dot request dot user dot families dot get okay so out of all the families that this user belongs to get the one where slug is equal to self dot quarks dot get slug and where created by does not equal self dot request dot user Except models dot family dot does not exist raise HTTP four oh four. All right. I don't remember if that needs to be like that or not. Uh Uh, and yeah, it, Ryan, like DMD says, just keep studying. Don't worry about, um, don't don't worry about whether or not it's a year or a month or ten years or whatever. It, it really doesn't matter. Um, form forms dot form. What fields do I need to have in here? I need to have I don't really need to have anything in there. Right? It can just be a form. All right, let's um All right, so let's let's get this user. This user has no family, so let's get this user into my family. Family invites from Kenneth Love to test user status is pending. Family is the loves. Save and continue editing. All right, let's refresh this. Not part of that. We got the invite. Let's click yes. And now we've got that. Sweet. All right, so now let's go over here to leave. Okay. So let's fix this view. Let's change this to filter. 
dot exclude created by equals self dot request dot user dot get. Okay, so now it says leave the loves, right? Uh, Niles, uh, I don't know if we'll have PHP or not. I hope we will. Um, I've been talking to Alina about doing it, but I don't know when she'll have time for it. I really hope she will. Uh, Hatim, is there any, is there some courses on Python data science? Uh, there's one. Um, it's a couple of years old. It may or may not be one that you want to take. I think it's still good, but I haven't done it in a while. Um, we've got more stuff planned. Um, so by the end of 2017, there should be some data science, some more data science stuff on Treehouse. Okay, so right now we've got leave the loves, save. All right, our template isn't great, but we're going to make better templates for this, right? So when I click this button, right now it doesn't do anything, right? So let's make that do something. Uh, success URL equals reverse lazy uh, dashboard. I think it's users dashboard, isn't it? Okay, cool. So now let's actually leave this one. So def form valid self form. So now we want to do models dot family dot objects. Models. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's do this family equals models.family. No, just to do get object, because that's the family. Yep. So self.getObject, and then we'll do self.object.members. I forget if it's remove or delete or what. It's related manager. There's add, create, remove. Okay, cool dot remove self dot request dot user return super form valid form all right so what we've done here is we take the uh we find the family and then we take that person out of the family all right so if i hit save and now i don't have the loves in my families anymore okay so the nice thing about doing that as that post is that they have to validate. They have to go, yeah, I actually do. I really do want to do that, right? I, I actually do want to delete that thing. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's cool. That's handy. So now let's go ahead and let's copy this over to the company. And what's cool is a lot of this is actually really generic, so we could probably make this even more generic if we wanted to. Um, but I don't want to worry about that right now. Companies. Company. Uh-huh. The rest of that stays the same. I don't need to do anything there. And then URLs, I just need to take this one. Leave 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 all right cool so now let's uh go over here go to this family test users in my family save because i want to get the thing where uh i can choose to leave this family okay so we're going to add a button over here somewhere that says 
leave. All right, so let's do version control and commit. Uh, leave views for family and company. Yeah, try, uh, yeah, it looks like something went weird, but Zed still seems to be okay, uh, and Lars still seems to be okay. Um, I'm not showing any dropped frames. Yeah, I didn't go offline. Okay, cool, yeah, um, some sort of little hiccup. I didn't do anything special. All I did was add in an else tag. So, uh, yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, URL groups companies leave slug equals object dot slug and we'll make this say leave and we give this a class btn btn dash danger all right now let's refresh this see what this looks like all right so there's our leave button. So if we hit that leave button, um, sorry, uh, others are reporting it to be okay. Try beam.pro slash treehouse. Uh, okay, so there's the, the leave button. And let's go ahead and copy this over to the family detail. Where would that go? That would go here. And this would be families leave. All right, so here we go. Uh, just to make sure this works on both of these, let's open up another tab. Yep, I can leave either of those. So now I'm gonna hit leave on this. Do I wanna leave treehouse? Yes, I do. So now if I look at companies, I do not have Treehouse. So cool, so that worked. Um, that's great. Let's, uh, let's commit this. Um, leave button on family and company and do a push. I know I push failed a while ago because my internet blinked off for whatever reason. Okay, cool, there we go, all right, so uh, if we look back over here, I would say that we have that one done, right? Yeah, I'd say that's done. So we're going to drop this in the done column and then we're actually going to go over here and we are going to close that issue. That issue is done. All right. So now we want to cover these notifications bit, right? All right, so y'all have probably noticed that I had some tabs open while we were working on stuff. So notifications are fun. Uh, and there's different kinds of notifications. So we can do notifications as in when I invite you to join my family, you get an email, which is cool. That's great. We can do that. And I can even put a link in there that immediately let you accept it, right? That wouldn't be hard to do at all. Or um, I could give you a uh, just a notification on the site, right? So like when I'm on GitHub, I've got this little bell that says, hey, I have notifications. Um, so we could do that. So we can do emails or we can do notifications or we can do both. Um, so there is several different things here about messaging, notifications, stuff like that. Um, I don't have any particular favorites. Um, this messaging here, this messaging is messaging between users. And I don't think that's something we actually want. I don't think we care about that one. We really want more email stuff. Right? We want the ability to, um, to email someone about something going on. So let's see. Django Mailer is a good one. 
Um, Django templated email is a good one. Django mail gun, Django mailbox. Just look at all these. So many. Okay. So, um, yeah, we've got those. And then we've got one like this one, which just lets us do GitHub like notifications. So let's see. What do we have here? Django notifications. Is a GitHub notification a like app for Django? Major difference is that is building something like GitHub notifications while well, Django is building a GitHub news feed. Yeah, no, we don't care about a news feed. Actually, actions, events, categorized before main components, actor, action target, target, and generic form keys. Uh, description of action that was performed at some instant in time by some actor on some optional target that results in an action object getting created, updated, or deleted. So just quick closed issue two on activity stream 12 hours ago. I don't know that we care that much about that kind of notification, right? Like, we want, we want to send the notification when somebody gets invited to a company or a family, but do we want to do that through just a little message on the site, which... Like, we can detect anyway, right? I mean, like, here, let's... The part that's important here is that there's this notification, right? But we can handle that on our own in, um, just in the template. So let's actually, uh, let's do this. Let's go, uh, to groups. And let's make a new directory called template tags. And inside template tags, we want to make a new file called init, which we're never going to do anything with. And we want to make another new file, and let's call this group tags or groups tags. Sure. Uh, and we had another one like this too, right? Like thoughts. Oh, we called it thought tags. All right. Let's let's rename it. Let's make it group tags instead of groups tags. Okay. And then let's actually come down here and steal some of this code. Um, I don't care about those. That I need. Uh, family invite, company invite. Those I need. Okay, so I'm going to make a little tag, and what that tag will do is, let's look over here at this, and let's look at, oh, what's the thing that we need? Is it badges? Yeah, like badges, like where that says 42, right? We need, we need a little badge that shows that you have invites, right? Okay, so... We're going to make a little thing that looks like that. Um, so here inside groups templates, let's make a new directory called groups, which this is for our generic stuff. And this is a place where we might want to add some things, right? Um, so let's call this badge.html. And inside badge.html, we're just gonna do span class equals badge. Uh, and then we'll say invite count. And then that's it. That's our entire thing there. All right, so this will be groups slash badge.html. And this will just be uh, invites badge. Uh, what, what did that look, that's just like that. Okay, invites badge. And let's actually say takes context equals true. This gets context 
And then this is going to get uh, invite type, and we'll def we won't even default that. Or we just generate two of these. Eh, let's do invite type. That makes more sense. Okay, so if invite type is equal to family, then uh, return invite count is equal to family invite no context user dot family invite received dot count no dot filter status equals zero dot count else company invite received status zero equals count right because that's the stuff that we that we need to have there all right so we don't even need those models which is always nice um and now let's go back to layout and let's do load group tags. And let's restart our server. All right. And then let's come down here into this thing. And where we have this drop down for the companies, let's add in right here. Uh, what did we call that? Invites badge. And this is going to take company. And let's see if this works. Um, all right, so there's zero. So let's actually do this. Uh, if invite count sweet now it doesn't say anything all right so let's do the same thing down here for family invites badge family All right, and we have no invites to anything, so nothing shows up. Super simple. Now, let's actually create an invite. Um, company invites, add a company invite. That to that, that to that, save. Actually, they're already on live stream. So we'll invite them to the first treehouse instead. All right, refresh this. Companies now shows a one, so that way we know that there's an invite, right? And we could add a one to here as well if we wanted, just to go, hey, this is where it is. And you know what, I think that makes more sense. Um, so let's do that. Invites badge company. And let's do it here. Invites badge family and then that way we've got check that out there's a thing here now this up here we could just throw in like a dot um, and that might be a thing to do um, yeah let's do that real quick too and then we'll get to uh, sending an email I don't think that will take us that long to do so is there a way we just do like a label and then like a dot glyphicon maybe. I 
Oh, maybe it's just a badge with nothing in it. Let's try that. Um, so that's invites badge. And then here, let's say this is just uh, dot. So let's just return the bool. I don't even care about the count. I just care about the bool of whether or not those things exist, right? All right, and then let's make our new tag here, or a new file rather. And let's just say if invites span class equals badge, badge. And then I think we can color it. Can we color them? I think we can color them. Let's just say, uh, what is that? That's in CSS. CSS. And typography. I know there's a color thing. Helper classes, contextual colors, there we go. So let's say like text dash danger. And that's it. Uh, and if, all right, so now that tag is called uh, invites dot. So then this one becomes dot. This one becomes dot. OK, it's there, but there's nothing in it. about that? Does that put something in it? Yeah, sort of. Uh, does anybody have an idea of how to actually get that dot to be there? Because I'm not certain on that one. Uh, what if we take out this and we just do and bull? Who? that's tiny. That's not going to work. That's way too small. Um, let's go back over here to glyphicons. Certificate might work. That might be a good one. Uh, no, text danger should not need a P element with it, Lars. Um, it just uh, colors anything that's text, right? So, yeah. Uh, let's do the Glyphicon send. That's a cool one. Let's do that. Uh, so, CIT class equals that. Uh, colon W and refresh little dark so maybe instead of danger let's go grab um, come on get down there there we go um,
Man, none of those are very bright, are they? What if we did the label? So we'd get label, label dash warning. Yeah, that's not bad. And then you're like, oh, cool, I've got one. And there it is. There's the one I've got. All right? Okay. So let's commit that, and then let's start looking at sending messages to students. Badges and info dot. Okay, so let's talk about sending emails to people. Um, so sending an email to somebody is actually pretty simple uh, in Django. There is actually a whole uh, send email. There's actually a whole Django thing for sending email. Um, sending email to somebody is not hard, um, which is good because we don't want sending email to be hard. So let's actually, let's not even use a package. Let's just send the email ourselves. Um, while I'm working on this though, I'm just gonna do a file backend. So let's set up, let's close all of this. We don't need any of these files open. Uh, settings. Okay, so um, Django has different email backends that you can use to send email in different ways. So uh, if you're using something like SES or Mailgun or SendGrid, you can get backends that support those. Um, or if you're doing it through SMTP, like you're just sending through your Gmail account, then uh, you can set that up as basic SMTP. I'm going to do this file backend so that I can, excuse me, so I can just look at the files that would get sent as emails. All right. Does that, uh, does that make sense to everybody? So we're going to add in this email backend. I'm actually just going to copy that and then... Copy, paste, there we go. All right, that took a while. Uh, and then I want to change this to os.path.join baster emails. All right, so now I will get a directory over here uh, that's called emails and that will let me see uh, all the emails that have been sent. All right, uh, and yeah, I don't, the reason I'm doing this uh, as pause brings up is uh, that I don't want to have to mess around with an email account. I'm just doing this while I'm developing, all right? So later on, we would do this with something else. Okie dokie. So let's come back over here to our models. And we're going to make a new signal. And this is going to be for both company invite and family invite. So receiver post save sender equals company invite and you know what while I'm in here let's see first of all I'm going to close these these are all cool but I don't think I need them secondly I need to look up um, signals I need to look up and see if I can have more than one uh, receiver there. So I want. Uh, <laughs> the model class being saved, so you can indicate the only one signal sent by some model. Uh -huh. Different signals use different objects as their symbols. You need to consult, uh, consult that for each particular one. Okay, post save, that's just for one single one. It'd be really nice if I could do it for multiple models, but that's okay, that's fine. Um, 
post save. So we'll just do this for each of these. So def. Um, actually, I wonder if I can do this. Let's test. Let's test this. Uh, invite sent, and this is going to take sender instance created and quarks. Because again, we only want to send that email the first time this is created, right? So if created, then we're going to do, you know, send email. Uh, for now, though, let's just do this. Let's do print created uh, instance dot um, class. And let's put an F there. Okay, so now let's restart our server because you often have to restart in order to pick up new signals. Okay. Let's come over here. I'm going to delete all of those. Yep. All right, so now I'm going to add one. I'm going to add a company invite uh, from me to this person for this company. And you can see here I got the created company invite. Now I'm just going to hit save again, and I shouldn't see that. OK, cool. So now let's go test that with family invites. That did not come out. OK, so I have to duplicate this for each person. But there's actually an easier way of doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, Blah, 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 blah. Where is that thing? Signals, go back. Go back. Don't want to use the at receiver. I want to use that one. So what I want to do here is I actually want to do post save dot connect uh, invite sent. And then I want to say sender equals company invite. And then copy this CTI family invite. And then go and delete both of those. So now if I come over here and I delete that one, yep, I'm sure. And I add a new one that is from here to here to here. And I hit save and continue editing. Oh, I didn't restart my server. All right, delete. Yes. Delete that one. Yes. Just delete them all. All right. So from there to there to there, there's the family invite. And if I save it again, no family invite. So I think we're good. I think we have those set up, right? So now we need to actually do the sending of the email. And sending email is actually a lot easier than you would think. Um, there is a ridiculously easy way to send email. <laughs> um, but what I want to do is I want to do, um, let's make a new file over here. And let's call it emails.py. Yep. And then inside templates, I want to make another new uh, directory. And I'm going to call emails. You'll see why I'm doing this in a minute. Um, so send mail will let me send plain text email. Send mail will also let me send multi-part email, which means I can send HTML messages. So we're going to get to that in a second. But for right now, let's do this. Uh, send mail. Yes, import that one. OK. Def send invite email. Uh, and we'll just pass the invite. Uh, let's pass the invite ID. Yep. And then we'll say from dot 
import models. Do we want to send the actual invite or do we want to send the invite ID? Because I want to send the class. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's do that. So let's say invite class, invite ID. Okay. So I shouldn't actually need models. We're getting a little tricky here in case y'all hadn't figured that out. Anytime you see me like making that weird face and slowly going, it's because I'm not quite sure what I'm doing on this part. Uh, okay, so let's try this. Invite equals invite class dot objects dot get pk equals invite id print invite all right so now over here from emails import send invite send invite email all right What do you mean no module named emails? It's right there. Oh, it's from dot emails. Okay. So then we want to do send invite email and we want to send in the sender and the instance. All right. Restart that. Come back over here. I'm just gonna do this for company invites for now. I'm gonna add a company invite, that person to that person, to that company, save and continue editing. Uh, okay. Int argument must be a string. Where did we get an int argument? Maybe I misunderstood what the sender is. Sender's the model class. Instance is the actual instance being saved. Oh, haha, ha. that should be instance.id. There we go. All right. It's at, I'm at I'm at over 2 hours, y'all. Like this is this is me forgetting what I'm doing. Uh so let's go back. Uh let's save and continue editing that. There we go. Cool. So you can see we got test user invited to the treehouse by Kenneth Love which that is our invite when it's turned into a string and printed, right? Okay, so let's send this email and then I'm gonna call it a day because we've been doing a lot of stuff. Um, and I will implement the template part and I'll just push that up to GitHub later and we'll talk about it next week. So we're just gonna send a basic email, okay? So let's do, um, let's go here to templates, let's go to emails. Actually, you know what? It's fine. We can do this. Um, invite email.txt. Invite email.html. That's good. We can keep the... Okay, so... Hi! Uh, User.get full name. You've been invited to join invite dot
if invite dot company. Oh, I don't like that. All right, let's just do this. Uh, you've been invited to join if invite.company, invite.company.name. Else invite.family.name. And if. By invite dot from user dot get full name. Invite dot to user. Got to use the correct tags there, don't we? Um, thanks feelings because that's how we've been that's how we've been calling our our stuff right and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take all of that we're going to paste it into here and we're going to put p tags around things wow there we go there we go So right now is a great time for y'all to start coming up with any final questions that you have for this week's stream. Uh, and if you don't have any, well, you know, shame on you. Not really. Uh, and um, ask your questions in chat, and then I will get to them in just a minute. And we will um, we'll be good. So I don't have a request, though. Under to response, that's not what I want either. But that just took a template name and context. That doesn't require the request. Uh, but that's going to be deprecated. Let's not do that then. Let's just go straight to template rendering. Eh, whatever. We will do, uh... Actually, yeah, we'll just do that. Okay, so, um, blah, 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 over here. So, text equals... From Django.shortcuts import render. Text equals render. Um... Request equals HTTP request. Equals request. Um, and our template name is emails slash invite email.txt. And our context is invite is invite. HTML is the exact same thing. Our context again is invite invite and then let's do send mail our subject will be new invitation and what else do we need to have in here uh, our message 
which is text, our from email, uh, which we'll just say is uh, feelings at example.com, recipient list is invite dot to user and HTML message equals HTML. Okay, so uh -huh. yeah. So that should work. Let's give it a try. Um, and if this doesn't work, then we'll just worry about it for next week. OK. Uh, so from to that save. HTTP response object has no attribute in code. I'll have to look at that in a second. OK, uh, so Lars asks, why did I use invite class and invite ID as parameters instead of just the invite object? Because the invite object may have changed between the time where uh, it was created and the email gets sent. So this should actually say um, status equals 0. And then this should be except invite class dot does not exist. Um, we should just pass. Else do this stuff. All right. And what does render give us? Uh, and it returns a template response. So I want template response dot what dot rendered content that's what I want so let's just do this let's just say subject equals that so y'all can see what each of the different parts are and then we'll say message equals that from email equals that that equals that and that equals that dot rendered content okay one more try has no attribute rendered content but it does It's a subclass. It should know about, it should have that. All right, well, I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to just finish this up and post it online. But um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching. So let's see, uh, Mohammed asks, what is the best way to create reports from Django apps. Um, there are libraries out there for doing reporting based on your Django models and your Django apps. Um, you don't, you know, really need them. Um, uh, if, your, uh, if your reports are simple enough, right? So it all just kind of depends on what you're doing in your... Um, in your response, all right. Sorry, in your app. Um, uh, if your app is is simple enough to where you're not doing anything super complex, then you can get by with a, a whole lot of um, a whole lot less uh, work, right? Um, if, however, 
There we go. There's our last one that got sent. So you can see here it says new invitation. It's from feelings. It's to test user, uh, which we need to put in their email address there. And it says, hi, test user, blah, 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 blah. And then there's that bit. So those are bytes. Those need to be converted to non-bytes. Um, and yeah, it's email address, actually. I don't remember what it's called on the model. I think it's email address, yeah. Um, so yeah, if you've got uh, if you've got a very complicated app then or project, then you want to look into libraries that are out there for um, uh, then you want to look out there for uh, libraries that will help you um, that will help you do this stuff. But if uh, you're not dealing with that, then um, then you can get by with just using like um, aggregates and annotations and stuff. So that's usually all you need. Uh, .decode UTF-8. Let's try creating one more of these just to make sure that it works. Uh, and then Akib says, is it React Native coding? Uh, what we're doing right now is not React Native. No, this is all uh, Python. There we go. And here's our new one. So that goes to the test user. And there's our text. And there's our HTML. So cool. We now have an email being sent to the user. Um, and it's doing it through these nice templates that we can edit and change as we see fit. So version control, commit. Um, I actually need to ignore emails. Uh, Sending emails for invites. Commit and push. Sweet. So, um, any last minute questions? Any uh, Anything y'all want to talk about um, before, we, uh, before we leave? No, we're good. All right. Well, I will see you all next week. We'll get started on Django REST API, which that'll be fun. We get to build our API, and then that means we can start doing all sorts of other stuff on top of that API. Um, check out the repo. Feel free to contribute any code. Send pull requests with things that you want to do. Um, and uh, I am more than happy to review your pull requests. And, um, yeah. We'll have all sorts of fun stuff going on next week. I, I don't know when this is going to end. So we'll, uh, we'll start on the REST API next week. All right. So thank you all for watching. And I will see you in a week. Be sure and check out Treehouse, though, if uh, there's anything you want to learn. And I hope to see you all doing the 15-minute challenge. So adios.